Hello and welcome to another quick lesson on Domain 1. This is from Module 3 on Risk Management Concepts. What the heck is risk? Most people don't understand it, so let's simplify. In the approximate words of Sean Harris, risk is the possibility of something bad happening. Risk is usually stated in terms of high, medium, or low. Your job as the CISSP is to determine the level of risk and explain it to senior management. Acceptable risk is the amount of risk that senior management is willing to accept. For example, every business has the risk of a break-in happening. If your business manufactures valuable goods like TVs or electronics, and if it's located in a high crime area, there's a high risk of break-ins. If management decides not to put any locks on the doors, and not hire any security guards, they're basically willing to accept the risk of a break-in. A vulnerability is a weakness, such as a broken fence. Sean Harris also called a vulnerability a lack of a safeguard. The word safeguard and control are the same thing. They simply mean some type of protective mechanism. A threat is something that can take advantage of the vulnerability, such as a thief, or in our case of the broken fence. It can also be a circumstance, such as the weather. A mitigation refers to the action taken to reduce the risk, such as fixing the fence. Mitigation can be partial or whole. Mitigation basically reduces the risk to an acceptable level. A related term is residual risk. This refers to the remaining risk after mitigation is performed. For example, people can still use a ladder to climb the broken fence or the fixed fence, or they can use a tank to plow through the fixed fence. Management can only make four decisions about risk, at least according to the CBK. So be sure to memorize these. The decisions are mitigate, accept, transfer, or avoid. And we have examples there if you need them. And I believe we have a separate video on how to deal with risk, or at least I remember creating a slideshow for that at some point. If you need something to remember, think the word mata, which is Portuguese for kill. So in order to kill the risk, you need to do one of those four things. So we have the M-A-T-A, -A, mata, for those of you who know Portuguese. Risk is sometimes rated using three factors, impact, likelihood, and exposure. Impact is the monetary effect that will occur or can be expressed as the impact to human health. In our case of the broken fence, the impact would be the cost of making the TV that was stolen from our facility. Likelihood is the measurement of possibility, usually calculated from historical data on past occurrences, measured in a percentage. For example, the likelihood of one person running through our broken fence to steal a TV could be a 0 .001, 0 .001 chance or 100% chance based on how many similar thefts have occurred over the past in that area. Oops. And exposure is the third term, and when an organization becomes vulnerable to a threat, for example the broken fence, creates an exposure to the threat of burglary. Burglary. Risk analysis can be done in two ways. You have qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative is opinion-based, and it's more of a narrative discussion, whereas quantitative is numeric and value-based. This is the preferred method because it's more objective. The business impact analysis is a tool used to help understand the criticality of assets within an organization. And remember that assets typically refer to data in the CBK, but not always. The BIA aims to answer the questions of which assets or data are critical to the business and the level of criticality. Now we move on to the traditional measurement of risk. The model that uh, CBK admits is out, that ISC squared admits is outdated, but this still has value in understanding how it works. So the asset value, <coughs> of course, is the asset's value. It can be gleaned from financial statements or management's opinion. You have exposure factor, which is the percentage of the asset that can be lost from a certain event. A single loss expectancy is the asset value times the exposure factor. <coughs> this is measured in money, in dollars. 
the annual rate of occurrence is how many times in a year the event occurs. Typically uh, this is a decimal, but it can be more, such as whole numbers. Uh, okay, so the annual loss expectancy is the single loss expectancy times the annual rate of occurrence, which shows how much the business is currently losing without implementing the safeguards. So if the safeguards are cheaper than the ALE, or the annualized loss expectancy, it's best to implement the safeguards. So it's important to know how to calculate all of these for the exam, because you never know which one they're going to ask you about. They could ask you uh, how to calculate the exposure factor or uh, the asset value based on a couple of other factors, such as the SLE or the ARO or, or AR, uh, or any, any of these. They could give you any of these numbers. And if you go through some of the practice exams from, I believe it's Mike Chappell or Mike Chappell, I don't remember how to say his name, but he has some, some good questions on that. The other random terms in module 1.3 are layered defense or defense in depth. This refers to relying on multiple controls or multiple types of controls to protect the organization's assets. For example, if you have firewalls in place but no ACL, no access control list, no configurations, and no locks on the data closet doors, then you're not using a layered defense. A risk framework refers to the model that your organization adopts to manage its risk. I do have a separate video that covers the various frameworks and how to memorize them. Supply chain. This refers to the flow of assets or data. Audits and surveys and reviews and testing can be done in the supply chain, but the, the CBK says that it's also acceptable to simply view the results of those audits and reports. And you would review those for entities within the supply chain, and then you could use that to make recommendations or enhance or reduce the security within those entities. For example, if your business contracts with IBM for custom computer parts and there is an intermediary company that delivers those parts especially for you they may be subject to certain types of audits or reviews so by reviewing their findings you can discuss additional or more effective approaches to security. The last concept in this module is threat modeling but specifically STRIDE. STRIDE is a classification system developed by Microsoft in which threats are categorized into one of the following components. You have spoofing or faking an identity. You have tampering or modifying the data. There is repudiation or repudiate, which is the ability to deny that you've done something, basically remaining undetected. Then you have information disclosure, which is the release or theft of protected data. Denial of service, which is the impact to availability basically making it so that nobody can access the data. And then you have elevation of privilege, which typically is escalation to administrative rights on a system. I highly recommend getting more familiar with these concepts, all of the concepts in this video, along with reading the book and other sources. So there is lesson 1.3 on risk management concepts very quickly. If you'd like me to cover a specific topic, please let me know in the comments below. I hope this video was helpful. If so, you know what to do. Thanks and have a great day.